Hello, I'm Peter Alsop. Today we'll listen to My Dad's Jungle Gym. It's on my Uh Uh-Oh album. A lot of my songs have different themes in them. I often try to weave together different topics when I put a song together, but today's song doesn't have lots of ideas. Mostly it's just fun. But it's got a couple of things that we can chew on after we listen. So here's our song to chew for today, My Dad's a Jungle Gym. My Dad's Jungle Gym He lets me climb on him My Dad's Jungle Gym He lets me climb on him He is so nice to me He is my daddy dream I shinny up his leg My Daddy lets me I climb out on his arm And he says, hey I swing up on his neck My Daddy lets me I sit down on his Head and then he says, What am I, Jungle Jim, you little monkey? That you stepping on my chin, you little squirrel? Hey, you come down from there, you little koala bear. I'm gonna catch you yet, you little marble set. especially when my kids were little. And like most kids and dads, I'd carry them around on my shoulders or under my arm. Sometimes we'd take a walk and they'd get tired and poop out, and and I'd end up carrying them on my back or cradled in my arms until we got home, or until they were rested enough to wiggle free and hop down and run around again. Don't think I ever dropped any of them, but I also remember periodically stashing them up on the roof of my van while it was parked, keeping my eye on them, of course, while I tied my shoe or transferred groceries from the shopping cart into the back or the side door. When I was done, I used to hold out my arms and say, Okay, jump! And they'd jump. And I always caught them. And we'd laugh. I now have the joy of being a grandparent. And I get to watch my kids and their mates raise their kids. And I see a familiar pattern. One that I learned about from my old friend Dr. Warren Farrell. He's got a wonderful book called The Boy Crisis where he points out all sorts of interesting facts about family relationships and how boys really do much better in their lives if they have a dad who's present. He points out things like how moms are more likely to set boundaries and dads are more likely to enforce those boundaries. Dads are more likely to do rough-and-tumble play with kids than moms are. One of the great things that kids get from that is that they get physical practice in learning how to make a distinction between aggressive and assertive behaviors, and that helps kids learn about empathy how to pay attention to how other people feel. In one of the chapters, Warren points out that dads are generally less risk-aversive than moms, which means that many of us dads let our kids take more risks than mom likes. We're not as worried about kids falling down, scraping a knee, or maybe falling out of a tree, either climbing or getting a sunburn. doesn't mean we don't care, it's just that we're less likely to make a rule about how it's supposed to go. One of the not-so-funny yet still amusing thoughts I remember having back then was when I'd say jump and they gleefully leap into my arms from the top of the car was Peter what are you teaching your daughters you always catch them every time and by doing that you're teaching them to trust men and you know there are guys out there who at some point in your daughter's lives won't be there for them when they jump 
Hmm, I wonder if, well, maybe I ought to just um, let him crash land one time. Of course, I never did. But the idea of someone doing that to train their daughter not to trust boys got me chuckling because it's so stupid. As Warren points out in his book, though, today's boys hear thousands of those kinds of messages about how men and boys are insensitive, self-centered, and uncaring. And those messages leave many boys feeling like, what's the point of even trying to care about others? I'm a male, and we all know that's not such a good thing. Well, Dr. Farrell and I both think that being male is a great thing. The bad press we get is because of how we behave. It's about what we do. Some of that could be improved, don't you think? I actually think it's wonderful that we're now taking a good look at how, in the past, we've demanded that kids make a definitive, binary choice about who they are and how they want to behave and how they want to identify themselves gender-wise in the world. There are so many more nuances than just the two labels, boy or girl, to explore in our quest to find out who we are, how we act and what we like or don't like or who we choose to love. The gender fluidity that's going on around us now can be confusing, but it's so much healthier than simply looking in our pants and then, depending on what we find, following the social rule book about how we have to be in the world for the rest of our lives. You might want to check out my Songs to Chew podcast number 99. It's only a wee-wee, so what's the big deal? <laughs> I'm Peter Alsop. I'll be back soon with another Song to Chew, and I hope all you dads out there are jungle gyms. Bye for now. <laughs>